I'm Dr. Fakhri Robani and this is Systematic Reviews and Meta-Analyses. The first learning objective is distinguish between a narrative review, a systematic review, and a meta-analysis. And this is the course learning outcome number three on the course syllabus. Generally speaking, there are three types of reviews. There are narrative reviews, systematic reviews, and meta-analyses. In narrative reviews, which are sometimes called uh, traditional reviews, the authors basically have a descriptive discussion of one or more aspects of disease ideology, diagnosis, or treatment. Although the authors may choose a few studies to discuss in this uh, review, a narrative review does not involve a systematic search of the literature. Therefore, there is a huge risk of selection bias because the authors pick a few studies to talk about that they think is important. And then we have systematic review. In a systematic review, there is a systematic process that involves a focused clinical question. And there is a system in place in order to search the literature and identify studies that answer this uh, focused clinical question. And because there is a method, for example, there are inclusion and exclusion for, for study selection, this process is reproducible. And the goal here is to reduce bias by identifying, appraising, and synthesizing all relevant studies on a particular topic. And these systematic reviews can be published in any journal. Now, one organization that is dedicated to systematic reviews, the Cochrane uh, Collaboration, which you can access uh, on their website, and their uh, reviews are also available through PubMed. And then there's meta-analysis. Meta-analysis is actually a statistical pooling or aggregation of results from different studies to provide a single best estimate of effect. So if there are multiple studies available for a focused clinical question, meta-analysis allows those multiple studies to be combined in order to have one final answer. Of course, sometimes the studies have uh, results that are similar and at other times they have study there are studies that have results that are different and meta-analysis will help identify the overall answer and if the answers are different in uh, different studies it will identify why there is variation now meta-analysis itself refers to uh, aggregating multiple study results now if those studies that are being aggregated through meta-analysis were found through a systematic review the result is a systematic review and meta-analysis. So the systematic review identifies all the studies and then the meta-analysis part will combine the results together to give you one final result. And of course, sometimes you can find a few studies um, that are not found through systematic review, but only uh, you, we use meta-analysis to combine the results. And this is a meta-analysis, but not a systematic review. And of course, not every systematic review will conduct a meta-analysis. So sometimes there is a systematic review, but not a meta-analysis. The advantage of doing a meta-analysis is that if you have multiple studies that are small and underpowered, but combining them, you will have one large study, so it will have increased power. And of course, by power, I'm referring to being able to find a difference for the clinical outcome or the surrogate outcome. And because, and because the uh, sample size will be larger, this will also result in improved external validity. There are also some limitations to meta-analysis. Uh, the biggest limitation is publication bias. In general, positive results are more likely to be published. So for example, if a study found a difference, that study is more likely to be published than a study that did not find a difference between the groups. So when someone is doing a meta-analysis, you know, they may not be able to find those studies that did not find a difference simply because they were not published. And this can result in a false positive when uh, those studies are combined. Therefore, when investigators perform a meta-analysis, they should take uh, extra measures to include unpublished data. Another issue in meta-analysis is that uh, only 
studies that are similar should be combined so when the studies are not similar they should not be combined and we will talk more about this when we discuss heterogeneity of the studies and when it comes to meta-analysis there are uh, generally three different types of meta-analysis the most common type that we simply call meta-analysis are the aggregate data and what it means is that um, you know uh, the studies that are being combined only the average data from each study will uh, will be combined. So, for example, the average age from each study, the average, um, you know, the outcome. And then we can have individual participant data meta-analysis, which will actually include information from every single patient from every single study and then aggregates the overall data. And there's also network meta-analysis, which is used to compare multiple drugs with each other. Uh, where they actually have not been compared head-to-head -head in a single clinical trials. Um, network meta-analysis and individual patient data meta-analysis are beyond the scope of this course. So this topic, we will uh, focus on aggregate data meta-analysis. So from now on, when, we say, when I say meta-analysis, I'm referring to aggregate data meta-analysis. Now, here are some reasons for why we should seek systematic reviews. Please pause this, re uh, this video and review this. When comparing narrative reviews to systematic reviews, of course, narrative reviews will have a very broad uh, scope. It's not explicitly described how they found the data source, sources and the studies that they talk about. And, you know, there's no uh, good system for uh, article selection and searching and appraisal. So the bottom line is that the narrative reviews are good for background information. So if you are encountering a disease state that you're not familiar with, a narrative review will be an excellent source to get familiar with it. Usually uh, one or a handful of experts will sit together and write these narrative reviews. Now a systematic review uh, in contrast will have a focused research question. There's a system for um, identifying data sources for article sele uh, selection, searching, and also critical appraisal of the studies that are included. And then it will result in a qualitative summary. And sometimes when a meta-analysis is performed, also a quantitative uh, summary will be available. And the bottom line is that systematic reviews are excellent for if you need uh, clinical evidence to support a specific recommendation. And when we go back to the quality of evidence hierarchy, you can see that systematic reviews and meta-analysis are at the very top. Now, uh, we have to be careful because uh, meta-analysis could include meta-analysis of multiple randomized clinical trials, but also some meta-analysis could include um, multiple observational uh, studies. So if it's a meta-analysis of multiple observational studies, it's a lower quality than a meta-analysis of multiple randomized control trials. And oftentimes we will see meta-analysis of both observational and uh, randomized clinical trials in the same study. Here are some examples. Um, if you do not want to see some examples, you may uh, go to the next video. Here's the first example. This is the effects of vitamin D status on risk factors for cardiovascular disease. So here's the title. Uh, it tells you that this is a review article, but it doesn't tell you what type of review. Uh, then you see the name of the authors followed by the abstract. So you can see the abstract. As you scroll down, then you will see they have some key points. And then it goes into the pathway. So they're talking about pathophysiology. So the authors are basically having a descriptive discussion um, of this topic. And then if you keep scrolling down, they basically talk about various uh, topics. And then it, you reach conclusion. So it didn't really have a systematic way of saying how they selected uh, articles to review. So this is a narrative review. The next example is an article on hypertension. In this case, they call it the seminar. So again, you see the name of the authors. And then you see an abstract followed by this, uh, the, the text of the article. So there's a, uh, you know, they talk about epidemiology. Uh, now they do give you some search strategy and selection criteria. Uh, they just tell you what keywords they used to uh, look for articles. This is, doesn't necessarily tell you 
how they actually uh, selected or, or I, I should say they didn't tell you how they included and excluded studies and they didn't critically appraise these studies. So they just, you know, describing hypertension. So as you can see, it, as you scroll uh, through this um, article, this is a descriptive uh, review of hypertension. So this is also a narrative review. Now the third example, well in the title it actually tells you a systematic review, but let's let's say they didn't tell you in the uh, in the in the title. Let's let's look at it. Now the abstract is different now. So you see uh, the abstract now it it has an objective. It ha it tells you what evidence how they reviewed the evidence. So it tells you exactly how they went about finding those articles and appraising them and then they tell you the findings so that whole thing was uh, the abstract and then as you go through the study so there's an introduction section and then as you go down the part that's important in systematic review there's a method section so the method section is the part that's missing in, uh, in narrative reviews in systematic reviews they tell you exactly how they searched they tell you how they and uh, how they evaluated those studies and how they included them in this study. So in fact, look at this figure. They're telling you how many studies they reviewed and how many of them, uh, so 34 studies were included in this narrative review. So this is kind of like the same process they have in randomized clinical trials when they have inclusion exclusion criteria for patients. In a systematic review, they do the same process except it's not for patients, it's for studies. So they're trying to decide which studies to include and exclude. So they ended up with 34 studies. In this uh, example, they only did a systematic review. There was no meta-analysis. Now let's take a look at an example of a meta-analysis. So this fourth example is a meta-analysis. So again, there's the title, there are the authors. And then again, you see the abstract is not just a summary. It actually tells you the background and methods, results, and conclusion. And then if you scroll down to methods, it tells you the study design and patients. And then it, uh, if you keep scrolling down, it shows you how they did uh, meta-analysis. So in table one, uh, it, it, it shows you that there was, uh, they actually found six prospective core studies. Now they didn't tell you how they found six studies. So this is not a systematic reviews, but they did find six studies so they have listed here one, two, three, four, five, six. So they're giving you the references and they're showing you the results of these six studies and then they're combining them. So they're showing you the total. So they combined all of the studies. So, so they basically aggregating all these six studies to get one giant study. So this is a meta-analysis. Now let's take a look at the next uh, example. So this one is a massage therapy for essential hypertension. It says it's a systematic review. Uh, so as you can see in the this is uh, this is the abstract so the abstract will have uh, information um, and then if you go down it tell, it shows you the introduction section and then uh, when you go to materials and methods this is where they tell you exactly how they did the systematic review so they have uh, they tell you what databases they use and what search strategy and then they tell you the inclusion criteria and then data extraction and quality assessment so they they have criteria for selecting studies and then also they assess the quality of those studies. So that's why this is a, a systematic review. And then as we go down, uh, if you scroll down, so these are the studies that they included. And this is how they uh, rank the quality of those studies. And then not only did they do a systematic review, but they also did a meta-analysis. So here again, so you can see here, there are three studies listed followed by total. So they're showing you, so each, each of these uh, green boxes are the results of that specific study. And then here the diamond is the overall total. So this is an example of both systematic review and meta-analysis. Let's look at one last example. So this is uh, binge eating disorders in adults. Now in the title, it tells you that this is a systematic review and meta-analysis, whereas the previous one, it didn't. So in this one, previous one that we just looked at, it just tells you that it's a systematic review, but we found that 
not only is it a systematic review, it's also a, a meta-analysis. So don't judge it just based off the title. So you've got to look at the method. So this one, uh, the binge eating uh, disorders in adults is actually accurate. So it's a systematic review and meta-analysis. So let's find out. So you can see again the, uh, the abstract. But if you scroll down to the method section, so here's the methods. It will tell you exactly what data sources they use and how they search it, and then how they selected the studies. And then they also show you how they assess the quality and what statistical. So it's definitely a systematic review. Now let's see if they aggregated the data to do meta-analysis. So as we scroll down, these are the studies that they found. And if we keep going, uh, we'll see that here it is. So you can see there are uh, one, two, three, four studies here. And then they show you the overall. So they actually combined these studies. So it is both meta uh, systematic review and meta-analysis.